Star Citizen has some amazing cities, with four major landing zones spread around the system. But recently I got to wondering how effectively you could get off grid if the rat race has been getting you down a little. This started out just for fun, but grew more into getting me thinking about life after 4.0, when we hit the pyro system where civilization is likely to be far further away, and we're going to have to sustain ourselves out in the black or in hostile worlds for a far longer period of time. So I did a bit of grinding and bought myself what I think could be the right ship for the job, the Anvil Carrick. Then I set out to get it set up as much as possible as a mobile base. So grab yourself a cup of tea while I roll the intro, and then let's get into it. The Anvil Carrick is Star Citizen's premier exploration ship. Originally a military scouting vehicle, Carracks have been repurposed to map the furthest reaches of the verse. The ship has four turrets, three manned and one remote, each with two size 4 laser repeaters. I'm happy to just leave these stock. I like the laser repeaters since they don't run out of ammunition, and in the current version of the game there's no advantage to switching these out for something like attrition since they all offer the same stats. When it comes to the components, I'm going to notch everything up to military grade A though. I want my Carrick to hold up against any dangers I find out in the black, and while much of the ship would be fine with stock parts, there are advantages such as shorter distortion shutdown times to be gained by upgrading. So for the two large shields I'm taking FR-86s, for the power plant I've got a JS-500, and the two large coolers become blizzards. For the QT drive, instant and speed is my most important consideration, with fuel really not being an issue given the size of the Carrick's fuel tanks and availability of refuelling facilities. So I've grabbed a TS2 for getting around. All in, these upgrades set me back a smidge under 800,000 credits. Not loose change by any means, but if you've got the 26.6 million to spend on the ship itself, you should really be in a position to make these improvements. But the Carrick does offer a lot more than just specs. On board we've got a garage for ground vehicles, a hangar for a small snub craft, a medical bay with a tier 2 bed allowing respawns and healing of all but the worst injuries, and a cargo bay that will take 456 SCU. The ship is a multi-crew dream with plenty of space on the bridge for you and your friends and social areas for the crew. And the crew dorm offers plenty of beds for your mates to log in and out from, and of course, as the captain, you get your own private quarters, complete with your very own teddy bear. It's not the luxury experience of something like an 890 jump, but for me, the rugged aesthetic of the Carrick is a thing of even more beauty. But enough about the looks. I'm interested to focus more on the gameplay experience and how we could potentially use this ship to survive and thrive out in the verse. Thankfully, getting the Carrick stocked up for a lengthy outing is nice and easy. Going to one of the cargo decks, I'm at Bajini Point here, I can grab plenty of spares straight into my ship. I'll grab myself a few sets of the Errol Hazard armor just in case I lose my precious orange set at some point. Keep in mind that if you set your spawn at the Carrick you'll get back much closer to where you died, but you won't have the white beacon undersuit and venture helmet that you get for free at stations or LZ hospitals. So while your main armor might be just a stone's throw away where you died, if you don't pack spares you might not be able to get to it. From the cargo centre you can also grab some Novikov armour for cold environments, I'll grab some additional undersuits too but more on why later, a container box and a bunch of cruise lux, the finest beverage in the verse. We also want to grab a multi-tool with a tractor beam attachment and why not grab a mining one as well just in case. We don't need to worry too much about buying guns since we'll go and get some more, but I'm going to make sure I've got at least one good shooter to start with. From the pharmacy at the med station let's also grab a med gun. And if you wanted to be a real completionist about things, you could also detour to a refinery station like Arkel one and grab a set of Pembroke armour to deal with any excessively hot environments. The Carrick has these awesome suit lockers which unfortunately don't currently function. For now all the gear I bought has just gone into the overall inventory of the ship itself, but I'd really love to see these get their intended functionality, making you choose what gear you take with you in your limited slots. 
One of the first things I want to do though is go and fill up my rather sad looking empty armoury racks with more juicy guns. But before I unleash my inner loot goblin, I'm going to want to stop off at a mining outpost to do a little more setup. I'm going to be running some bunkers for the spare weapons, but I don't want to be doing repetitive runs down into the bunker and back up carrying a couple of guns each time. So instead I want to make myself a couple of large 2 SCU boxes. At the mining outpost, transfer the spare Novikov undersuits out of the Karak's inventory and into that of the outpost itself. I know you need three now, but at the time of recording I thought it was four, so sorry. Before you leave the Karak, make sure you open up the hangar bay door. Now head over to the Blue Platinum Bay building, where you're going to be calling out an Anvil Pisces. Quick note, you can use this same technique with other ships, but the Pisces is the one I choose for a number of reasons. Its inventory will hold enough Novikov suits to make two 2SU boxes. It's the perfect companion for the Carrick, having basically been the ship designed to fit the hangar. It's relatively cheap at a smidge over 400k. It's instantly claimable with expediting and can be called at the extra small plat bay landing pads. And finally, it's actually useful for other stuff with the Carrick, as we'll look at later. Okay, so jump inside the Pisces and transfer those Novikov undersuits from the outpost inventory into the Pisces inventory. Then pop the Pisces in the Carrick and fly out of Armistice range. Land the Pisces next to the Carrick, making sure you've got a clear line of sight to one of these side turrets. Back to the Carrick and into the side turret. Blow up your own ship. And voila, two 2SU boxes are yours. Now this is not the time to find out you forgot your tractor beam, as these big boxes need one of those to move. For my final bit of prep at this outpost, I can grab out my cyclone base model. There are a lot of options for ground vehicles in the Carrick, as we'll look at a bit later, but I love the cyclone base since it has this flatbed in the back, which is conveniently capable of carrying one of my two SCU boxes. After that detour, it's time to go ahead and actually get to work. Bunker missions are a good option for gainful employment as part of my newfound nomadic lifestyle, but more importantly right now they're a great route to loot. It can get pretty lonely out here in space, so I want to make sure that my Carrick is set up to accommodate not only me but also my org mates, and I want them to be able to hop into game with nothing and find everything they need on board. The bunker missions can either be friendly, where you're backing up existing security forces, or hostile, where you're taking a bunker back off entrenched bad guys. And with our current setup, we've got the tools to deal with things either way. If the bunker's friendly, I can just drive right up to the front door and land the Carrick outside. But if it's hostile, I can land a couple of kilometres away and drive the cyclone in to avoid the turrets. I used the cyclone really successfully to complete a medical rescue mission for a player downed in a bunker. Even though he was on a friendly defend mission, because he couldn't share it with me, the turrets would have seen me as hostile. As it was, I was able to drive in and rescue him, and then he shared the mission and we completed it together. I even let him hop on board and use my medical facilities because I'm nice like that. Speaking of which though, I'm going to want to make sure that I set my spawn at the Carrick's medical bed before I head out, just in case the baddies are having one of their ninja days and down me. So once you arrive at the bunker, just make sure you take one of your two SCU crates into the mission with you. Keeping one in the garage and one ready in your cyclone will just save a bit of time. Pop the box down in the elevator, and then first worry about taking care of the mission itself before you get loot hungry. Many a well-meaning loot goblin's been shot in the back of the head while stuck in the inventory of a red box. Once you're done though, you can take the crate round with you using your tractor beam, and stuff it to the brim with all the lovely weapons you find. The crate will even fit a decent bit of armour just in case any of my mates don't fancy wearing my yellow arrow and looking like my underlings. If you're looting armour in bunkers though, it's best to favour the sets off dead security personnel as opposed to the Ninetales sets. The markers don't always work, so if you're doing bunkers in the future with others, having someone dressed up as a baddie can be a one-way ticket to some blue on blue action. After just a couple of bunkers, my Carrick's onboard gun racks are looking nice and loaded. We've got two of these armoury sections to the back of the subdeck, and unlike the suit lockers, these work as intended. You can absolutely also store guns in the ship's inventory, but the gun racks are particularly effective at transferring weapons between players in a party, since your mates can just grab one from the rack. For transferring, the two SCU boxes are also great, since they're effectively a shared inventory, so they can be a much more convenient way to pass gear between a party than dropping it unceremoniously on the floor. 
And similarly, I like to use one of the little containers you can purchase from the cargo decks to store food and drinks, making it easy for any of the crew to grab a snack without asking. But what about some ship combat? Bounty missions and combat assistance beacons are two other great ways to make a living in the verse. Bad news here for any solo players, if you're intending to rock around completely on your own, the Carrick may not be the ship to do it in. It has a fairly juicy armament with a total of 8 size 4 guns, but these are spread across the 4 turrets and none of these can be slave to pilot control. So if you're floating around on your own, there's really no point in attempting combat in a Carrick. However, if you can muster 3 or 4 friends, the Carrick can be a great bit of fun and with a combination of reasonable firepower and some serious shielding, it can make short work of the Hammerhead ERT missions. Of course, if you're anything like me, there might come a day when you push things a bit too far and uh, end up in desperate need of repairs, but there's no need to head back all the way to civilization. Don't forget that you can get yourself fixed up and ready to roll out again at any of the outposts with large landing pads. Land at one of these and hop into your Mobiglass, and you'll find the same services that you would at a station or a city. While you're at these outposts, do keep in mind that you can also create yourself little stashes. Something could happen along the way that sets you back a bit. Bed logging and 30k protection did not always function perfectly, so you could potentially have to reclaim your ship at some point. However, you can always hoard some of your loot at these outposts, using their inventories to give you a spot in the system to head back and resupply if you face any issues. Just try and remember where you left your bits and bobs, but if all else fails, the Knickknacks app on your Moby Glass is there to help. Part of the idea behind this video was trying to find and utilise a really versatile ship. I think sometimes, because we have such ready access to all of our stuff and all of our ships in Stanton, the versatile jack-of-all-trade ships kind of get neglected, because the best ship for any particular job is just always at arm's reach. The Carrick, particularly thanks to its relatively spacious garage, offers serious versatility. I was using my cyclone to get to hostile bunkers, but I could just as easily take a rock mining buggy to do a bit of gem mining in a cave, or take one of the new STVs out for a spin. Just a side note, if you haven't seen already we've set up a new Frontier Consolidated channel to focus more on some of the gameplay and shenanigans we get up to in our community. And our first video, No Sleep Till Lawville, is up there now, and we take a column of the Little Steves on a group trek. The link to that's just in the video description down below, as is the link to our Discord if you want to come and find a group to play with, and get involved in some of these events. But back to the topic at hand, and part of what I've really enjoyed about making this is that I got out and doing a wide range of stuff. Exploring caves, running bunkers, pew-pewing and trading. It's really easy with a game like Starset to just get stuck into your one loop, and keep doing that every time you sit down to play. Whereas I found when I logged in on my Carrick and I had all this stuff at my fingertips, I just made up what I was doing on the spot. It would be remiss of me not to focus in a bit more on the Carrick's perfect companion. It's not just about blowing it up to make big boxes. The Anvil C8X Pisces is an incredibly manoeuvrable little ship, and unlike most traditional snubcraft, it has its own small quantum drive, making it much more capable than something like the Merlin, for example. The Pisces has four size 1 guns, which shouldn't be underestimated, but its main role is as a shuttle for the Carrick, to take three members, one of whom pilots, on any away missions where you might not want to put your mothership at risk. Conveniently, the Pisces has two indents, which are almost too perfectly sized to accommodate the two SCU boxes, so you can bring back a surprising amount of gear within one of these little shuttles. From time to time you are going to need to make planet fall, and if you're playing in a group the Pisces can be really useful for this since you can send anyone who needs to head down to an LZ off, while the rest of you just hang out in orbit. In the future I can see this sort of functionality having a far more importance. If you were operating in a much more remote system like Pyro, where you might need to keep a careful eye on your fuel gauge, by using the Pisces for away missions, you can conserve fuel in the Carrick, while also keeping it safe. If something bad happens to the red shirts you send down to the planet, you might lose the Pisces itself and whatever gear they have on them, but they would respawn back on board and you'd still have the main ship. Your expedition wouldn't necessarily grind to a halt and you wouldn't lose the stuff you'd accumulated to that point. You could then make a decision on whether it's worth risking it to go back in with the Carrick to recover your losses, or you can just take that particular hit on the chin and leave with most of your stuff intact. 
At some point though, you are going to have to head back to the bright lights. Maybe you need to upgrade parts or restock more conveniently. But there's no need to waste the opportunity to scrape a few more credits together. The Carrack has a pretty large 456 SCU cargo hold. So if you're heading back to a major LZ, why not stock up on any metals and gases that are available at your nearest outpost? Drop these to the TDD and you'll be able to sell up, more than covering your gas bills, and that's with no third party websites necessary. If you were to get interdicted along the way by a savvy pirate crew, just crank the speed limiter to max, and for the time being until those master mode changes come in, enjoy watching the pirates get smaller in your rearview mirror. Thanks for taking the time to watch this vid, it was something a bit different but I had a whole lot of fun making it, and it made me really appreciate a ship that until now I've kind of written off as a mobile respawn point for org events. I know that Stanton is arguably too small a system to need something like this, but it really got me thinking about the future of SC and how these features could be useful when we have bigger, more sparsely populated systems to contend with. And I do realise the Carrick is a hefty purchasing game, but maybe this might be something to work towards for you in 318 after the wipe. Or maybe you'd like to try doing something similar with a slightly smaller ship. The constellations, for example, lose the medbed, but have many of the same features available with beds for logging in and out, cargo space, turrets, space for ground vehicles and a snub. And maybe the new Drake Corsair could offer the same sort of deal when we see it next month with 317.4. If you enjoyed the vid, then please consider donating a like and a subscribe to the channel. And if you're feeling extra generous, sharing with your friends, org mates and grandparents would go a long way. And with all that said, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.